Hello everyone, I'm RecV5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition with Winter Frost. Yes. And in the last episode, we uh, went through Redwater Den. And we uh, ended up having a huge magical battle with Stalf and Salonia Calonia or something like that. The dead people. Yes, well, yeah, they're, they are now the dead people. But anyway, and uh, it was a fairly big, splashy battle, and we had to use some of our resources in order to come through that one on the, on the other side. But uh, we managed to prevail with the help of the staff of the Lesser Daedra, which I'm going to have to recharge now. So I'm going to uh, use some of my... Uh, Lesser Soul Gems? Yeah. Well, that one's bailed you out more than a couple times now, hasn't oh, it? Oh, yes, it has. And I think I'm also going to have to recharge my bow, too, by the looks of it. Looks like it takes a greater soul gem to almost recharge it fully. Yep. So, there we go. Because it is a more effective weapon when it is fully charged as well. And then, of course, we've got the uh, dead guard guy here. And so uh, it is now noon, but that's okay. We'll head back outside anyway, because I have a plan. Oh? Yeah. Gonna set up your tent? Nope. Good afternoon. Yes, you don't know that I've killed everyone in there. Actually, no, we're going to uh, use our bat travel ability. And we're going to use it to go to Castle Volcahar. Okay. Rather than uh, traveling on foot all the way back there. Because we just magically appear here outside Castle Valkahar, and almost no time has gone by. And so we will go into Valkahar Keep. Uh, loading screens. At least they're not too long in this game, generally speaking. Yeah, they're not Diamond City in Fallout 4. No. That's just about the longest loading screen in a modern game I've ever seen, actually. Okay, where are we going here? We're going to talk to... Gareth Marai. Or however you say it. Because we got the Bloodstone Chalice and we brought it back. I see Gar you Garen Marathai. Lord Harkon yeah. will be pleased. You met Stolf and Salonia, I assume. Lord Harkon and I suspected they might follow you there. Yeah. Uh. As well you should have. Welcome to the politics of Lord Harkon's court. Vingalmo and Ortheolf both long for our Lord's throne, but cannot make overt moves against him. <laughs> Each sought to gain power by using his underling to kill you and keep the chalice for himself. By ensuring the chalice reaches our lord, you have increased his power over them and at the same time deprived them of their little pets. You've done, Lord Harkon, two great services. Take what you've learned to heart and be careful who you trust. Now, I believe that Lord Harkon wishes to speak with you. Okay. See, now I can use the... Activate the Bloodstone Chalice. And it gives me Blood of the Ancients. Which, uh... Is a temporary effect... That, uh... If you could find it. If I could find it. Up, up, up. Down, down. Yeah, there. Which, uh, it not only does my, my drain spell now drain health, it also drains magicka and stamina. Nice. For one game day, right? So basically, uh, by 1.30pm 
tomorrow, uh, the effect will have worn off. Yep. But until then, at least I can uh, drain a little bit of magicka and stamina. And in the meantime, we have to go and talk to Harkon, who is over here somewhere. Yeah. Ah. Uh, you are here. Good. Yeah. What did you want? Yes, I did. When I told you that I was grateful for my daughter's safe return, I told the truth. But I did not tell you everything. Hmm. I suspected Good. as much. With strong instincts and a cunning mind would serve you as well as blade, spell, or claw. As you know, vampires are powerful, but we have limits. Our great enemy is the sun. And until recently, it's an enemy we've had no way to fight. For centuries, I searched for an answer to this problem. I found an old prophecy written by a moth priest. Those scholars who read the Elder Scrolls. The prophecy tells of a time in which vampires will gain power over the sun and will no longer fear its tyranny. I believe the secret to unraveling that prophecy is written in Serana's Elder Scroll. I have ordered the court to assemble. I have a new task for us all to carry out, and that includes you. Come now, and hear my proclamation. Okay. Uh, after you, Shorty. Yeah, well, that's because you've got, like, those, like, platform <laughs> heels on. <laughs> God. Yeah. Well, I'm having fun with that. Science of the night. Hear my words. The prophesied time is at last upon us. Soon we will claim dominion over the sun itself and forge a new realm of eternal darkness. Now that I have reclaimed one of my Elder Scrolls, we must find a moth priest to read it. I have spread false rumors about the discovery of an Elder Scroll in Skyrim to lure a moth priest here. Now it is time to see if those efforts have borne fruit. Go forth and search the land for rumors of a moth priest within our borders. Look to the cities. Speak to innkeepers, carriage drivers, anyone who would meet a traveler. Go now and carry out this task. This is my command. It will be done, my most interesting. Well, okay. Any idea how you're going to find a moth priest? Skyrim's a pretty big place. Yeah. Well, do you have any ideas? Well, back before I... You know. The College of Winterhold was the first place I'd think to go for any kind of magic or historical thing. The wizards know about all kinds of things that people probably shouldn't know about. Actually, now that I think of it, I'm going to come along with you. I've been really wanting to get out and explore a bit. It appears there's some activity going on upstairs. Yes, some socialization from people. Yeah, so maybe we should pause briefly while we uh, deal with that. We'll we'll get through this here a little bit here first. Here we are. Oh, that's awkward, isn't it? I think it? I was a little short with you. I'm sorry. You're my savior. You freed me. I'm grateful to you. Well, okay. I'm not entirely sure what this is going to do for you, but you deserve that much. Okay. So it looks like I'm finally, gonna, <laughs> I'm finally, I'm finally gonna get that kiss, eh? Oh God. There. Okay. Well, before we continue on, maybe we'll pause briefly until the uh, ruckus upstairs settles down a little bit. All right. Because it's coming through on my headset. 
And we're back. Yes, and we need to talk to Serana some more. So what's your story this time, damsel in distress? I guess so. Good damsels in distress are my specialty. Really? You're in good hands, trust me. Well then, perhaps I'll be grateful to you again soon. Okay. Well, we could ask her some more questions about her past now. These are more vanilla type things. I what mean, do you know about Elder anyone, Scrolls? Not a lot. You'd figure a couple hundred years locked away with one would have given me some insights. Yeah. Turns out you don't learn much from just sleeping with something. <laughs> uh, are you saying you want to learn more about me? Not at this rate, no. <laughs> <laughs> A shot down. Okay. Are you always That's a vampire? A long story. Okay. I guess Let's hear it. We kind of have to go way back to the very beginning. Do you know where vampirism came from? Uh, well, I would guess it came from a exactly. Daedric lord. The first vampire came from Molag Vol. She was not a willing subject, but she was still the first. Molag Bal is a powerful Daedric Lord, and his will is made reality. For those willing to subjugate themselves, he will still bestow the gift, but they must be powerful in their own right before earning his trust. So, how did you actually become a vampire? Degrading. Let's not revisit that. But we all took part in it. Not really wholesome family activity, but I guess it's something you do when you give yourselves to a Daedric Lord. <laughs> hmm. Well, you've met most of us. My father's not exactly the most stable, and eventually he drove my mother crazy with him. And it all ended with me being locked underground for who knows how long. It's definitely been a bad thing, on the whole. Yeah. Okay. A cure? Why even think of it that way? I can't think of any reason I'd want to lose this gift. Especially after what I did to get it. It may have driven my family apart, but I'm still here. And I'm alive. I won't give this up. Okay. So I guess, uh... Now we have to make a decision on which way we're going to go from this point. Mm -hmm. Because I think that things will not make very much sense going forward if we don't actually go back to the main quest line like the main storyline, at least for a little while. And so I think we're going to have to do that. All right. Because, uh, you know, like I, if I remember correctly, a lot of the things in the uh, um, Dawn Guard storyline sort of uh, re require you to already have at least uh, started the main quest line and finished Dragon Rising. Well, what level are you now? I am at level 27, soon <laughs> to be 28, so I'm kind of thinking that I can probably uh, um, handle this now, right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to have a look at this arcane enchanter. Okay, so it looks like I don't have any new enchantments to learn. Then I need to go and see... Uh, oh yeah, it's the middle of the daytime, so these guys are all going to be asleep right now. So we might as well go have a nap first. Okay, and we'll level up. And I already looked and figured out what I wanted to do. It's in the Alteration Tree. And it's called Alter Self Resistances, and you can choose two resistances to increase by 25%. Nice. And this is a very, very good one because I can get an extra 25% resistance to fire and to shock. Because those are ones that I don't have inherent resistance to. That's right, yep. And then, <clears throat> what happens is now I've got... If we uh, cycle down through here, I've got resist fire from altar self of 25. So that's 44 because I got my 
boots enchanted with it. Yep. And that makes it 94 with the necklace. Nice. Which means that I could get up to, uh, you know, like a hundred. Hmm. Have you even been there yet? Yeah, we've been there briefly, but I think I might have, uh... Okay. Stupid dog. So, anyway... <coughs> now, next thing in, on, on, in, on the, the list to, to, to do... The next thing... Okay, we can grab a bunch of these blood potions and uh, human flesh and stuff now that we're officially members that of the clan. Yep. Good find. So we're not actually stealing when we go to take this stuff now. Guess I have to get that one from the other side of the... Stupid dog. I hope you find life so we can work on uh, replenishing some of our... Uh, supplies. Supplies. And then we'll head down here to the the uh, dungeon to find a thrall, and we'll have some uh, some breakfast. Some breakfast. And then we need to uh, work on selling off some of our excess stuff. And since we now have access to some merchants in this area, never made it far. It we'll start working on that. A, man, a little extra protection never hurts. Yeah, a little extra protection never hurts. Let's see here. So we can sell. We could sell that, or we could sell this instead. Right? Maybe we should, uh, well, I don't know. Well, it does extra frost damage, but if you're hitting something that's resistant or immune to frost... That's true. But we can sell this. Iron Dagger of Dismay. Yeah, we'll sell the Dwarven Dagger because we've already got a similar enchantment on this. Well, let's see. Difference of six points of damage between the two, and I haven't done any smithing on that Dwarven Dagger yet. Yeah, maybe right? give that a try. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell off the uh, sword. And use a dagger for a while? And we'll use the dagger instead. Hopefully I've got some... Uh, I might be able to buy some Dwarven Metal. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Did you go and sell your sword before checking if you could buy Dwarven Metal? Uh, yeah, I did. That's okay. We'll manage. Okay, we'll sell that. And we'll sell that. And we'll sell that. <clears throat> and I think that's just about all that I can sell to her. Because I... Oh, wait a minute. Steel dag of, or Dagger of Weariness. I can sell that too. Okay. There. So basically for melee weapons now I've got the Dwarven Dagger of Freezing and Valdir's Lucky Dagger. Okay. I'm gonna just uh, check time. check in my uh, magic chest here and see if I have any Dwarven Metal. Yep. I do. So... I don't know whether I have sufficient smithing skill for that or not yet. I don't remember. I'm going to guess not? No, I don't. Okay, so I can't smith it up anyways. So I guess we might as well put that back. Along with a whole bunch of this other stuff that I collected. Okay. 
we'll mark that as a favorite for now. And we still have some things that we need to sell that uh, the smith wasn't interested in buying. So, I'm going to stash that for now, too. And what do we got here? Alchemy ingredients. Alchemy ingredients. Flowers, flowers, flowers. Yep, that's right. All the flowers, all the time. Okay. Yeah, it's just like the onions guy. Okay, I don't have that much stuff stashed in here, though. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just... Uh, should we tell them the onions guy story? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went to Subway once. And uh, ahead of us in the line was a guy who uh, placed his order. And then, of course, you know, like they put whatever you want on the on the, on the sandwich. Yep, yep. Right? And what the guy, you know, the girl behind the counter put all the stuff on that he asked for, including raw red onions. And I guess she didn't put enough on to satisfy him because he freaked out. And he started yelling at her, onions, onions, more onions. <laughs> yeah, and then she kept putting more and on. And she kept putting more on and more and more and more. And then, and then the guy just turned and walked out. <laughs> so, oh, man. Because apparently uh, he was upset enough at the lack of onions that... Uh, and you know what? That thing, by the time she was done, had way more onions on it than I would ever eat. <laughs> God. Yeah, you said you saw that guy uh, yeah, a couple I, years ago, yeah, too. Yeah, I, I saw him a few years later, just um, through, for, through pure coincidence. Oh, yeah, we found this thing, too, and I have no idea what it's for. I'm going to... No, it's a quest item. I can't dump it now. I'm stuck with this thing. Yep, you're stuck with eight pounds. Well, that wasn't very smart. Oh, well. Anyway, like I said, I was going... I was out shopping with my wife at the mall... And I was sitting on the bench in the middle of the mall like I usually do because I don't really want to, you know, follow her around in every single store that she goes into. Yeah, yep. So I sit on the bench in the middle of a hall, big hallway and we'll just watch the people while she's uh, been doing her stuff in the stores. And I just happened to see this guy walk by and he looked exactly the same even though it was like years later. Right? <laughs> God. So, uh, yeah, obviously nobody committed him or anything like that. He was still out <laughs> walking around loose. Still being a me an onion menace. Yeah, but you remember that, right? Like, the, yep. guy, the guy just went apeshit. Yep. Like, he was just, like, really, really, uh, you know, being mean to this girl who was, like, a yeah, minute, you know, being mean to the minimum wage worker behind the counter I at feel Subway. bad for her. Like, yeah. Like, she was obviously not getting paid enough money to put up with that crap, right? Yeah, I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> yeah, well, some people are just like that, right? They're just stupid. But there you go. Now you all know the onion story. Yeah, that's the onion story. But also, you know, like, why, why abuse someone who's making shit money doing a job that most people don't even want to do you know yeah i mean you know like it's a it's a crappy low paying job as it is why abuse someone well when they're they're doing it just trying to make a living or whatever right yeah exactly you, know? you see a lot of that kind of thing now and then though yeah you see clips of it pop up everywhere people are just unreasonable with that kind of thing yeah people are dicks right <laughs> That's just basically what it is. Because I know in, when I was young, I worked in uh, I worked in a uh, retail, like a corner store. Yeah, yep. For a couple of years. And I also spent, you know, quite a bit of my uh, youth working in gas stations because back then they still had full service gas stations where you had to actually go out there and pump the gas and check the oil and all that kind of stuff wash yep. wash the windows 
and uh, you know like back then there wasn't any such thing as self-serve gas stations actually they didn't exist and uh, occasionally you would get you know somebody who was a real jerk come in and start giving you a hard time too and you know what you don't get paid enough to put up with that kind of crap Which is why, you know what, even if even if something went wrong or I wasn't entirely happy with the service that I got or whatever, like I never really gave people a hard time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, even yep. even if they screwed up my order at the local Dairy Queen or whatever, like I don't give them hell for that. I just say, hey, uh, this isn't right kind of thing and then ask them to fix it, but... It's not like I'm going to abuse them over it. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't understand why people act that way. And you know what? Most of the time when you point out that they made a mistake or whatever, they're very polite and accommodating and they uh, you know, do what they need to do in order to make it right. Yeah, you know? hell, they give you free coupons. I mean, they, they see and probably go through like hundreds of of people and hundreds of food orders a day it's impossible to expect that they're going to do every single one completely 100 percent error free either yep right boy this is one tough lock tumblr system man i'd have it open by now uh you would i don't want to hear about it i want what i asked for yes sir. okay well, let's see if that dagger I pulled out of this cabinet is something I didn't know. Oh, look, that ring, too. So I learned a couple of new enchantments. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, while I was chatting away about that... Okay, let's talk to this guy. Is it not? Who is a speech something? trainer? I'm happy to help if I can. And let's see if we've got some stuff. Okay, well we could sell these. Right? Although I could give the better one maybe to Serana or something. Yeah, she'd probably benefit from it. Yeah, we'll sell this one though. And we can sell those. We'll give maybe one of those rings to Serana, too. Yeah, she's a magic user, so... Yeah. And what else have we got here? The other magical items to sell. Okay, we're keeping that. Keeping that. Okay, how about potions now? We got lots of potions that need to be sold. Yep. Probably more potions to sell than what he's got money to spend. Well, at least you freed up a little bit of room. Yeah. Well, also, we can buy that grand soul gem from him. And then do it all over again. And then we can sell some more potions. Yeah. Okay. Stamina poison. Okay, that doesn't look very tough either. Okay, wow, look at that. We got all kinds of cure disease potions. The only I usually carry a couple, but yep, yep. I don't I don't carry like a whole big bunch of them or anything. All the invisibility potions. All the invisibility potions. Let's see if we've got anything else going on here, too, that's... Oh, look, we can sell that. There. We've got them down to zero. Nice. <laughs> I approve. Yep. And then we've got the the uh, potion guy here, too, right? You'd be surprised what people leave behind when you burn their village to the ground. Yeah. 
we can sell a few more potions to this guy because he's basically your typical alchemy vendor. But we'll try and sell some of the large volume of cheaper ones that we've got going on here. If we have any. I think you might have done the rest of them. Yeah, probably. Well, these regenerate health potions. We can sell those to them. And we can sell those. And, um, well, let's sell a few of those as well. And a couple of those. I don't think we're going to get them down to zero, but we'll get them close. Unfortunately, the arithmetic just didn't work out. Oh, well. Yeah. Revel. You just got to sit there with your spreadsheet and try to figure out how to take all his money, right? Yeah. How can I get that last seven gold? Well, we'll come back here to the chest and we'll just dump the extra potions that we couldn't sell in here. So, uh, restore health, regenerate. Okay, we'll drop those in there. We'll drop that one in there. And uh, minor stamina. We got a lot of more powerful stamina potions than those, so we'll drop those in there. Yeah, because they weigh a lot. Yeah. And we can probably drop the regular resist fire. We got a couple of pretty powerful resist fire potions going on there now. Yeah, in spite of the fact that you used one. Mm hmm. Okay, we'll drop that off. We have a lot of invisibility potions. We don't need to carry that many. And, uh, what else have we got here? A couple of frostbite venom will drop off as well. And then over here, we'll drop off some of this unenchanted jewelry. Because I'll try and do lots of this, uh, you know, like level farming for enchanting and alchemy and stuff off camera rather than boring people with it. Well, and you'll have to do some soon because uh, you've got like a massive stockpile of ingredients now. You'll probably level up a whole bunch from it. Probably. Okay, well. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm carrying that weighs so damn much, but... Probably the tent and the wood. Yes, probably. Okay, well, it looks like we also grabbed all of those other ingredients out of those two locked cabinets. Got a book that we can drop in there. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to give up on carrying around the uh, tent and the firewood just yet. Okay, <coughs> so I guess we're about ready to go. We're set, are we? We're set to go. And uh, like I said, my apologies to folks about changing direction here, but I think, uh, like I said, a lot of things can get kind of weird and glitchy if you uh, go too far in some of the uh, DLC without doing some of the basic quest line first. Uh-oh, we got... See him? He's trying to sneak there. He just snuck right past my arrow. Hmm? Where are you going? Hey? Okay. Yeah. Where'd you come from? Aha, there you are. There's totally going to be no mercy here. I had a black soul gem. Nice. Okay, none of that stuff really interests me very much. But there's also usually one in this tower.
you could do that pretty much perpetually. Yep. Well, because it absorbs magicka and stamina as well, right? Yep. So, so long as that particular special effect stays, you know, active, it's actually, a, it makes your vampire drain a very powerful attack, right? Okay, well, anyway, we're on our way. And you know what, we can do... Uh, we'll travel to Icewater Jetty. Okay, now, I mentioned in the last episode when we were at uh, uh, Redwater Den that we were going to have a little bit of fun. And so now I'm going to reveal it. Because I'm running a mod called Skyrim on Skooma. Okay. All right. Yep. <laughs> This is actually one of the milder effects. Just tripping balls on skooma? Yep, just tripping balls on skooma. Like I said, this is one of the milder effects, though. Some of them can be uh, very, very strong, uh, dramatic, uh, vivid hallucinations. Weird. And this effect doesn't last very long, right? Only about a minute or so. Okay. It's almost worn out now. You can see on the on the right of the screen there. Uh oh. Who's there? Looks like it wore out just in time. Yeah, just in time for Skyrim to want to kick your ass. Yeah, just in time for Skyrim to want to kick my ass. And so... Whoops, wrong one. So I'm going to take your crossbow <laughs> and give you an iron dagger. And uh, have I got anything else here? Yeah. Okay. Uh oh, I need more ma mana, more magicka, restore magicka. Yeah, and I'm gonna take <laughs> your battle axe and give you my pickaxe. God. I'll show you what a real. Next thing you know, he's kicking your ass with a pickaxe. Can't do too much harm with just a pickaxe. I'm gonna grab my pickaxe back from him now. And now you've got a fancy Dawnguard war axe. I had one before. Or battle axe. Actually. Oh, okay. Don't need to bother. That one's almost dead. Okay. That's funny. I thought I had vampire hunters turned off. These guys must be vanilla. Yeah. Yeah, they seemed like they were vanilla. They didn't seem yeah, like they were like they're, level yeah. 50 tanks. They're, they're vanilla. Okay, well, we'll have to re re remove some projectiles now because I can't be walking around with a crossbow bolt sticking out of my chest. I mean, you could. Yeah. Let's okay. Get indoors. 
or in a cave. Anyway, so where'd that other guy go now? I have no idea. Does this one here? Okay. I want my iron dagger back. Is he along the coastline here? I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to find the bodies after the sorry. Yeah, that guy was just the uh pickaxe guy. The pickaxe guy. Well, I guess you're just gonna have to smith some more iron daggers. I guess I will. I'll have to grab a couple more iron daggers. From somewhere. Okay, meanwhile. Maybe what I should do though. Yeah. There. Because I don't know where that guy is. Anyway. There, we'll switch to those arrows. Uh, yeah, okay. Are well, you still giving that guy a, a last look? I was given a last look for that guy, yep. Just to try and find him. Maybe he fell in the lake. Maybe he fell in the water, yeah. And of course, we've got to mine the iron ore. <clears throat> Could just equip the pickaxe. Okay. Well, we're going to, instead of, uh, you know, like, traveling the hard way all the way. Fast to, travel. We're going to use our bat travel. Ugh. Fast travel. Fast traveler. And we're going to go to uh, White Run. Because that's the closest that we can get. Well, I suppose it saves you the time of having to run all... That would take probably like two episodes. It would take the entire episode just to travel to... Yeah. From, from where we were, yeah. Because it did the last time we did this, right? Which is why I decided to do this, because uh, rather than treating everybody to uh, just watching me travel across the countryside. Well, at least you don't walk. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's some that's somebody else's thing. I'm not going to... Co <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to copy them, okay? Because... Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, all kinds of friendly fire targets there. Oops. Yeah. Look at that, eh? It's fine. Someone else back there? Well, Behind the tent? Oh, yeah, there is too. Oh. Okay. That's dangerous. Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oops. <laughs> and now that horse will kill her. Yeah. Careful. Oh, she resists that magic effect. That's okay. Maybe we'll switch to the crossbow, right? Just don't miss. Oh. Yeah, now she went and turned to mist. I hit Miko by mistake. Stop I'll give you a swift and beautiful death. 
damn it. Okay, that's enough of this. There's just too many people around here. Yes, there's too many. There's too many. There. Yeah, I accidentally hit him. <laughs> okay, dwarven bolts and gold and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Did you end up getting yourself a bounty because of that? Probably. If you provoke me, I will be forced to unsheathe Yeah, well, if you'd stay the fuck out of the way, I wouldn't have hit you by mistake. Uh, Jeez. Uh... Nope, I didn't get a bounty for that. Surprisingly. Yeah. But it still is annoying, nevertheless. What a curious city. It's so open. All right. So that means that uh, there was very likely vampire attack going on inside Whiterun, too, because these two events seem to be connected all the time. Uh, okay. Yeah. But I'm not going to bother going in there. You'll just forget that it was going on and then one day walk in there. Yeah, probably. Well, no, it'll be over. Anyway. We'll probably walk in there and it'll be like Bellathor's dead on the in the street along with like three or four guards or something. Yep, yep. You know? And it'll screw up my uh, my uh, merchants available there. And you gotta resurrect a bunch of people. Yeah, actually, I'm uh, at least with with uh, with uh, deadly dragons, you can make uh, and certain NPCs uh, essential, right? You know, so if they're too dumb to run away then uh, you can at least uh, not have to worry about have losing to worry your shopkeepers. Losing your shopkeepers and stuff, right? And really, to tell you the truth, if that was going to happen, in, you know, if they really wanted to be immersive about it, somebody else would take over the business, right? After a certain amount of time. At least until they run out of people. Well, no, no, maybe not instantly, but maybe, uh, like, say, if if uh, Alvar and Riverwood gets killed, right, by a mm -hmm. dragon attack or something. Randomly generated NPC? Well, yeah, exactly. At some point, a randomly generated NPC will arrive in town and take over the business, right? Got a bunch more red dots there, to, too. Yeah, there's like a whole bunch of them here. You I guess she must have made a uh, saber cat cub zombie or something, and I shot it because I didn't know it was hers. Uh. Yeah, that's the thing, though, right? Serana will make zombie everything. Zombie chicken, zombie goat. Yeah, oh yeah, the, the zombie chicken is the best, right? Like, wow. Why did you waste a spell doing that? Because <laughs> she has, like, <laughs> unlimited magicka? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Uh, even uh, a lot of other NPCs that have the ability or the tendency to uh, uh, use necromancy type spells, they'll also zombify almost anything, right? Yep. You know, Yo, it's like AI check, do I have a zombie? No, let's zombify anything yeah, nearby. Yeah, there's that goat. That goat will make a great zombie. <laughs> 
The best thing is, though, is things will attack that goat. Yeah. Well, I suppose, if anything, they might act as a distraction. At least against the stupid uh, uh, AI in this game. Yeah. I don't think I'd be focusing oh. on the goat. Where'd that Surprise bear? bear. Where'd that bear come from? Man. You know, you're just, you're just walking up, uh, uh, walking down the road, and then it's like, boom, surprise bear. Yeah, the bear just came up and bit me in the ass. Out of nowhere. It just goes to show you that literally everyone in Skyrim wants to kick your ass. They'll actually go out of their way. Yep. Is it possible that we haven't been this far down this road yet? Yeah, you know what? Actually, I think we haven't. Yeah. Because we used an alternate start, right? Yeah. So this will be your first time walking down this road. I totally shouldn't have informed you of that. Now you're going to pick every fucking flower <laughs> along the way. I was going to do that anyway. It's in my nature. Fuck. Okay, here we are in Riverwood. Yeah. How are we doing here? We need to unload some stuff again. So, over here is a modded player home. Added by a modder, fairly famous one, known as Eleonora, I believe. Okay. And uh, it has all of the, uh, you know, like the nice crafting stations and all that kind of stuff. And has a smelter here. You can melt down your uh, various things that you don't want to... Just make sure you don't melt down anything important. Yep. And, of course, you've got lots of flowers to pick, and uh, you got an apiary where you can harvest some bees and stuff like that. Uh, the interior, like, actually, if you go to Helgen, you can actually find a dead body that has a key to this place, right? But it doesn't really matter, I mean, to, to establish ownership or whatever, right? You know, like it's... If you uh, pick the lock and go inside, it's yours. Yeah, you Back just uh, turn the key to your house with a screwdriver. Yeah. Well, there's no screwdrivers in Skyrim, though. Because I don't think they had screws. Shh, right. it's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah. And so it's a fairly smallish cabin, but there's lots and lots of storage, and it's all sorted, you know, in all kinds of different ways. And you got a cooking pot, and you got a uh, enchanting table, yep. and you got a alchemy lab, and all that kind of good stuff, right? Although in this case, mostly I just came in here just to check and see if there was any uh, magical items, right? 
that I wanted to disenchant. <coughs> disenchant. And since there isn't, then we'll head on over this way. Oh yeah. Got to pick up this sign. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Varric? Yep. In Dragon Age 2? You know, we'll just uh, make a sign that says don't. You can hit people with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is actually... The sign of don't? This is actually a sign that says don't. And you can, hit, and you can hit people with it. <laughs> God. And you can actually upgrade it, too. It's, it's actually uh, classed in the game as a battle axe. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a battle axe class weapon, right? You can see in the, in the, uh, in the list there, under type. Yep, yep. Yeah. And if you have, uh, firewood and charcoal, you can smith it up so that it's a little bit stronger, too. Although it's not that terribly strong of a weapon, right? Do the smithing exploit get, like, the ultimate sign of don't? Um, oops, I'm going the wrong way around here. Okay, we'll drop that off. We'll drop those off. Um, ants, bat, swarm, crossbow. Okay, well, that's worth quite a bit of money. Wow. Um, okay, what else have we got in here? You know what? I'm not using this right now, so I think I'm going to stash it. Okay. And we'll stash all of our God, alchemy. you're already full of that shit again. Yep. I'm a dedicated flower picker, that's for sure. Okay, and then what else? We got a K-Bear pelt and some Saber Cat pelts and some metals. There, that'll do. Yeah. So lighten the load a little bit. Oh, I forgot to look and see if I had any... Uh, I don't know if I have any. Okay. Oh, but I can grab a couple of pieces of firewood here. Because I can go to the smelter. And at the smelter... Okay, maybe it's not something I can do at the smelter. I thought I could. Hmm. Maybe it takes more wood? Yeah, maybe I don't have enough wood. I got five pieces of wood. That should be enough. Um, How does one make a charcoal now? Well, um, maybe I don't have enough materials for all of the... You know what I mean? Rondominga. Don't see charcoal in there anywhere. Maybe it's at the forge? Maybe. I don't remember now. It's been such a long time since I've even tried to do this. Nope. I know I have a mod where I can do that, but I can't remember now. That's fine. Oh well. I know, you wanted to smith up the sign of don't, didn't you? I did. I wanted to smith up the sign of don't. But, uh... The next time I see a piece of charcoal, I guess I'll pick it up. Maybe you have to have paper or something with you, too. I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe. Shall we pause while you figure out the magical recipe for charcoal? Sure. And we're back. Yes. And we're just going to make a quick stop in the inn here. Unfortunately, I could not figure out how to make charcoal. 
Yeah, you said it was one of those things that only shows up if you uh, actually uh, have the stuff in your inventory, right? A modded recipe kind of thing? Yeah, I think so. The ale is going bad. We I seem to that. remember that it was something you could make at the uh, smelter. Did you hear me? Yep. Yep, ale's going bad. I guess you don't have potatoes in your ears after all. And I thought all you sure needed was firewood in order to do it, but... Come on in. Let me know if you need anything. Or take a seat by the fire and I'll send someone over. Yeah, okay. Stupid we just have dog. to wait for Delphine to get into bed there so we can go and have a quick bite to eat. <laughs> Until the dog opens the door on you. Oh, that's okay, because we'll go in on this side. <laughs> everybody opened the door on you. Yeah, everybody opened the door. Luckily, the angle was right. So, anyway, the Delphine is another special feeding victim. And I think that this is something that may have gotten uh, fixed in a later version of this mod, but in, in uh, the version that I have, you actually have to go down here and activate it, right? Ah... Uh. And there's like a whole list of NPCs there that give you different special effects, right? Yep. So having fed on Delphine's blood now, um, oh, I've got skooma addiction too, right? Got to get some more, man. Yeah. Anyway, um, having fed on Delphine's blood, I get 15% resistance to dragon attacks. Nice. That's really important yeah. for what you're about to do. And I do have one other one, and that was Maven Blackbriar. Because I think I hypnotized her and then fed on her in, upstairs in the Bee and Barb yep. when I was in Riften. And that actually increases your speech skill by 10. So every special feeding victim, every time you see... That little message that says, I sense powerful blood nearby. Well, then that means that uh, uh, a special feeding victim is nearby, right? Yep. And uh, you can get some kind of a, you know, like a small buff, sort of. Uh oh, it's getting to be almost morning time now, too. So... I'm going to duck in here, and I'm going to sleep in this bed in here. Until evening. Until evening. Which is like 14 hours away, but okay. Then I will no doubt be hungry again when I wake up. See, they even have a nice little soundtrack while yep. you're in here. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool, right? Okay, so we will be on our way. Guess we'll have to have a stale blood potion, and then uh, we'll we'll. Uh, We still have that going on. No, the skooma addiction thing doesn't last very long. Yep. Right? It wears off after a while. So it's actually not nearly as big a deal as... Uh, as you would think. As you would think. But it is still kind of fun. Let's see here. Uh, you begin questioning walking on principle. Uh, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Apparently you're questioning walking.
Wondering about your walking now? Yeah, kind of. I'm wondering about that. There you go. That's how you can tell somebody's stoned right there. They're like stopping and they're running and then they stop and then they're walking and then they stop and then they're running again and then they stop and then they're walking again. Okay, well, that was kind of different. But anyway, um, <clears throat> now, if we look here, we've got Skuma Bliss, which gives us a 10% buff to stamina regeneration for 10 minutes. Nice. And then, of course, when that buff runs out, then we will suffer a uh, debuff due to Skuma Addiction. Yep. All right. <clears throat> the Guardian Stones, but I think I've already got a uh, Guardian Stone that I... Or, uh, a. Uh, yeah, didn't we go to our way to get one? Yeah. Lady Stone. A Lady Stone. Recover health and recover stamina 25% faster. So I think I kind of like that, and I'm going to keep it. <clears throat> and here we are at a new mod area, modded area encounter. And this is the Pillars of the Way. And here is where you can activate your unarmed combat abilities. And in this chest is a uh, hooded robes of the way as well as a book that describes perk requirements, which you can also get out of a menu, right? Yep. And the thing that describes the apostates, which are basically uh, um, monks that have gone astray, and they're basic, they, you find them with bandits and with necromancers in fortresses and things like that. Yep. And then there's the Book of the Way, which explains how the... Uh, uh, particular system of beliefs here came about. They're apparently an offshoot of the uh, Moth Priests, right? And then this one explains the Pillars of the Way, because you can find pillars that give you special abilities, kind of like the uh, uh, the stones, right? Like the Standing Stones kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. And so over here are some Fist Weapons which are actually technically daggers. So you have a steel punch dagger and a Nordic Ulac. And, uh, you know, like they, you can equip them on either hand. Uh, you know. Yep. So that they do damage. But also you have these, what basically is a, f a fist weapon, which does damage as well when you equip it, right? So now, as you can see, I'm uh, equipped to do damage unarmed, right? Yep. And this fellow, Glosstheim, is an NPC follower that you can just recruit. Nice. And he is a pretty good unarmed fighter. He also has like a, a fist weapon there at his belt, as you can see. It's a, it's a claw yep. weapon. And uh, I'm just going to see if I can trade some things nice. with him. Um, let's see here. We'll see if we can get him to wear these robes of the way, right? Did you accidentally equip those robes? No, it's a bug when you actually go... Oh, shit. We'll take <laughs> that back. <laughs> when you actually go to... There, see, he equipped them. Yep. And what it does is it increases his armor rating and... Gives him a buff to damage with unarmed. Yeah. Okay. Luckily, we're in first person, so we can re-equip our stuff without incident here. But yeah, it's just a bug that happens in, uh, you know, for some reason where if you go to trade something to someone, you equip it first, and then you have to press a button again to trade it, right? Ah. Uh. I don't know why. I think it's something that has to do with AFT, like the the multiple follower mod? Possibly. Anyway, we should uh, talk to Serana here too. And uh, we'll trade some things with you.
because I keep forgetting to do this. Right. Yeah, you got to give her her amulet we'll and give uh, her that necklace and, and a ring. this ring. Yeah. There. So now she has the. If yeah, she wouldn't equip that right away. Yeah. See, sometimes uh, that that uh, set of robes that you can find can be the unhooded version. And if you give those to him, he won't equip them. He'll only he'll equip only, the hooded ones. He'll only equip the hooded ones voluntarily. And I think it has something to do with uh, the um, uh, cold resistance rating. Because the hooded robes are warmer than the unhooded robes are, of course. Oh, okay. Right? Yep, yep. Anyway, this is one of the pillars that they're talking about. And so what this one does is it allows me to learn monk skills 20% faster. Right? And now we need to go into our mod configuration screen here for a minute. And we need to look at Way of the Monk because basically what this does is it has like a whole, uh, you know, like sort of built in own tree system for uh, different perks, right? Yeah. That doesn't appear in your normal perk tree. You have to go in here to look at them. But what you can do under advanced options is you can set this so that skill leveling grants player character XP. You know, just like using any other skill does. Nice. And you can also set your unarmed damage scaling so that your unarmed damage will increase as your monk skill increases, right? Yeah. And then, of course, we also have... Uh, skill leveling with unarmored because it's basically split into two unarmed skills and unarmored skills right oh, okay although i don't get benefit from unarmored skills unless i'm not wearing armor right which in this uh playthrough would probably be suicide well not necessarily because uh your unarmored skill actually will give you an armor rating as well Okay, and then monk perks use main perk points. So that means when I level up, if I allocate a perk to a monk perk, then that's my perk that I've spent, right? Yep. So you could basically you can integrate the the uh, perks of this uh, mod into the game, right? Fairly seamlessly. So anyway, and Glostein may or may not use weapons. It kind of depends on uh, um, what you find and what whether, he's doing. Well, whether or not the weapon he ha finds is more effective than his unarmed damage is. Yep. So now I've collected myself a little following, right? Because I think the dog is still around here somewhere too, isn't he? He was. Yeah, okay. Well, man. and another reason why I needed to uh, follow this, this quest line for a little while, at least, is that I need to get a player home because I need some place that I can dismiss followers to. You know, like when I want to change followers or uh, when, you know, like... I want to go into something where it's not appropriate to have followers with you. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I did install and partially, at least briefly, test out a quest mod that looks pretty good, actually. The first little bit that I played was really good. But you can't have uh, followers with you. Ah, right? uh, yeah. And so I need some place to dismiss my followers to. If we're going to play that quest mod. If we're going to play that quest mod. Well, you've got more than enough money to buy a house once you can <laughs> unlock the ability to do so. Yeah. Anyway, this is not quite finished yet, but this is actually a uh, tower that Recv5X and I built. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And it's set into the side of the hill here, not far from Helgen. Uh, right outside of a nice set of Corundum veins yep and 
one of the reasons that I mine lots is because, uh, you know, it's a good way to get gemstones too, right? It's not like I'm that hard up for the money to, you know, buy the metal from the, from local smiths and that kind of thing. But you'll see here I just got a flawless ruby, right? Yep. And with these gems, of course, if with gold and silver ingots, you can actually make uh, more expensive jewelry, which sells for more money once you put enchantments on them and that kind of thing. So that's why I do that. Anyway, uh, and in this little... Of course, we have a pickaxe there. I'm not going to bother picking it up because I've already got one. Uh, I placed some, uh, you know, like an enchanting table and an alchemy table. Yep. And my most recent additions to this has been a little bit of safe storage, like non-respawning storage. Oh, okay, like this wardrobe? Like this wardrobe. So you can put stuff in here and it'll still it'll still be there later. Right? And I also made some custom spells. And these are basically uh, for more or less novice level mages. They're not extremely powerful. But they are, many of them are useful, right? So... If we look at them, here, for example, we've got the Novice Barrier spell, which gives you a 200 armor... Uh, Armor spell, basically kind of like Oak Flesh, but it only lasts for 10 seconds. Yep. And then we have uh, this one, which gives you uh, 40 damage resistance for 15 seconds. This is one of my favorite ones. It's called Sandman's Stumble, and it's basically a paralyzed spell with a one-second duration. So all it does, basically, is it makes your enemy fall down, yep. and then they have to get back up again, right? And, of course... You know, over here I've got... This is actually a very good one for a beginning level character, too. It's an area effect calm spell. Oh, okay. So you don't actually have to hit the target to affect it, and it will affect uh, multiple targets within an area. And then this one, of course, is a, a lower level fear spell. So that, you know, like a beginning level character can cast this spell. I think the standard fear spell is really uh, expensive. Yep. To cast and difficult. So, so this one's a little bit more so budgetary. This, well, this one has a duration of only 11 seconds compared to the standard fear spell, which has a duration of 33 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a few other ones too. Like this is a very weak um, chain lightning spell, basically, right? Where the lightning bolt will jump from one target to another. Yep. This is a very weak fireball think weak fireball oh yeah from, from oblivion from oblivion yep right yep. and uh also this this is like a uh basically a very weak ice storm spell right so that's kind of what uh, this is about this is also like a weak fire bolt right like a half strength fire bolt yep yep so it gives it gives lower level characters a few more Playing spell, options. spell casting options, right? At least without chugging back mag magicka potions. Well, the thing is, though, uh, a lower level character that doesn't have very many magic items yet to boost their magicka pool and that kind of thing may not even be able to cast some spells. And then, of course, we've got a couple of beds here. Although I don't recommend that you sleep here if you're a vampire because the sun will come out and fry your ass. Hmm. And up here I put another, like, a safe storage chest and a cooking station and a wood chopping block nice. and uh, a smelter, right, that we can make some corundum ingots out of that corundum ore. And, of course, the grindstone and the workbench and an anvil and the tanning rack. All that good stuff in this tower. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't figured out how to do nav meshing yet in order to get NPCs to actually follow you in here. Yeah, and so nobody notice, will actually come into the tower. Yeah, nobody will actually follow you into the tower, right? 
and you'd probably have to nav mesh this whole path all the way up to the tower from out here somewhere too because uh, our followers will catch up to us eventually once we have left that area right where did the dog go anyway you gotta summon a dog do you yeah uh funny I thought I had that favorited okay well I guess I didn't there okay there's the dog okay so now we've got the dog and we'll uh, switch this to something a little bit less likely to screw us up as we're just going to wander over here and do something before we go into Helgen. Clearing out the bandits, are you? Did we have a freeze? I think we just had a freeze out of nowhere. Okay, we'll have to pause. And we're back. Yes, and we just had a freeze crash, which doesn't happen very often. Just had to kill these bandits again. Yep. Oh, look, and Serana zombied one. Yeah, Serana zombied a bandit. Anyway, uh, the reason that I come over here and do this is just so that I don't have to uh, interrupt the sequence of things after we uh, rescue one of the uh, uh, guys from... From Helgen. From, from Helgen. Okay. Oh, look, I can get two for the price of one out of this guy. Oh, I guess he must have had a pretty high health total or something. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do it again. Before he... I mean, there's no use in letting it go to waste, right? But anyway, I wanted to pick up this treasure map. Mostly, that's why I came back here. And also, just to point out some things of interest, if you happen to have that armor... Uh, armored robe mod. There's a set of uh, mage robes here with that armor enchantment on them. Nice. And, of course, there's uh, the usual things. There's a satchel and a coin purse, and if you're the type that eats food, well, there's a little bit of food items and stuff around here. There's a skill book in this tent. So, there's a few uh, you know, useful things here. Now, we can be on our way. Uh-oh. Where'd you come from? Oh. Ooh, that's a bad one. They summon them, right? Like, uh, some of these goblin shamans can summon these things. Archery combat. He just he just summoned it again. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. You're all but fed up with archery combat, are you? Well, no. I need to do a little bit of healing or because you'll bleed to death. because of the bleed effect here, and then we'll. Uh, Uh, 
We'll switch to this. While he shoots you in the face over and over again and gets you to bleed real good. Now it's just a shaman. Yeah. So even goblin arrows are bad, eh? Yep. Well, all arrows, really. Yep. All arrows are bad. But anyway, these guys quite often carry... Wow, look at that. He had two, Couple of them. two staffs of ice spikes. Maybe he was dual wielding. Maybe he was dual wielding when he wasn't summoning giant frostbite spiders. Quite often, these guys will carry, uh, you know, like healing potions and that kind of good stuff too, right? Yeah. Like quite a few of them. Although not today, I guess. Oh, that one had a... Okay, well, you know what? The tale of the great moth priest hunt. If you think it'll help. Yeah, I think it'll help. Because I don't really need this thing. So I'm gonna... See that? Yep. Right? It's just a bug. It's I just weird. Know. Yeah. Like I said, I think it's a bug with, uh, with AFT. You don't figure it's Sky UI or something else? Um, well, I don't know why Sky UI would do it, but I suppose it's possible. They haven't been alien to bugs in the past. Yeah. Like the save game bug. Yeah. Well, that one was something that was introduced, so uh, that's, that's their own bug. That one's not introduced by a mod, I don't think. I thought that was a Sky UI bug. In any case, there's a Sky UI fix for it. Yeah, I noticed that you you uh, brought up a couple of uh, mo <laughs> mods for me to, to fix the, uh, the save game thing. That's right, and yeah. then I just left them there. Yes, I see that. I was trying to give you a hint. <laughs> it bothers you that much? It does. Who the hell wants to delete save games? So anyway, there's the dragon. Well, I I do it be just because uh, if you get too many of them, it gets to be a bit of a chore too, right? Ah. Okay. So we will open the gate. I don't see... Oh, maybe there is. Maybe there's bandits here now too. Because I've waited long enough before coming here, right? There's bandits here. Let's uh, find out where they all are. Okay, there they are. Where'd you come from? Oh my. It's like a nasty mage. He's around. That one. An apostate. You see that? Yep. Okay, it looks like there's lots of bandits in here. Yeah, not only did they have time to set up shop, they had time to uh, really get themselves uh, an army, huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then that fox comes running through the middle of everything here. <laughs> well, we'll take his gold and his lockpick anyway. Then we'll eat him. That one was an orc, too, though. They can be kind of dangerous, eh? Yep. I know, I play one. 
Yeah, they have oh, black dragon ninja toe. Okay, we're going to grab that. That sounds kind of rare and exotic. Let's see what this guy had on him. Spell Tome Open Lock. And, ooh, a Dagger of Absorb Health. Okay. Give that to Glossheim there. Yeah, I think I am. I'm going to give that to Glossheim. See, if the if these robes were a hooded version, if I were to trade them to him, he'd, he'd probably wear them. he'd wear them. But if I trade these ones to him, he won't. And there because are the warmth. there are hooded versions of these too, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But just because of the warmth, he won't he won't wear them. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking uh, anyway. I'm just speculating, but I think it's because of the warmth. Now, where did that thing go? There, there. it is. We'll see if he uses that. See, you don't have quite the degree of control in this game that you do in uh, Fallout 4, where you can actually enter an NPC's inventory and physically equip things for them, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I thought that was actually a really uh, handy innovation when they when they did that. You like that one? I did, yeah. That was something in Fallout 4 that I liked because then if you wanted your one of your followers to uh, use something because it was a really good item or something... You could. You could make them use it, right? And we're going to eat all these bandits... Okay, I think I can probably turn this predator vision thing off now because it's actually more of a hindrance than a help here. Okay, he just had a spear. So I do have spears in the game too, right? Added by a mod. Mm -hmm. Like by immersive weapons, actually. <coughs> However, I don't have uh, the uh, good spear animations because I had I actually there is a, a uh, fairly famous uh, spear animation mod in the Nexus but when I tried installing it I had problems with it ah uh, yeah my character would just go into a T pose probably some kind of a uh, conflict or something yeah it probably was a conflict with some other mod but the problem is that you know when the problem just started when I introduced that mod so then you just got rid of it. So I just got rid of it again because, you know, like, especially when you have a, uh, a no, mod. He got up. Uh, yeah. When, when you have a mod list of 200 or more mods, uh, you know, it's, it's a hell of a lot of time and trouble to go and try and troubleshoot. And why, figure out which one's the problem. Yeah, which one is the problem. And uh, since I had my game working pretty much the way I wanted it before anyway, I just figured I could just live without that. Sadly, spears would be nice, but uh, Bethesda kind of fell flat on that one. Well, you know what? Like I said before, and I've, I don't know, I've even mentioned this talking to people in posts and stuff like that too, is I think that they definitely, in Elder Scrolls VI, they've got to They've got to put spears in the game, and they've got to put proper spear animations in the game, too. Well, they were one of the most common weapons of the time, right? So well, of, of almost any, almost every ancient civilization that ever existed... Just use spears. Use, use spears, right? You know, like uh, any... Uh, pictures and history books and stuff like that that you ever see, whether it's the Greeks or the Romans or or uh, the 
other cultures that they they warred against, like the Persians yep, or they've got their spears. whatever. They all use spears, all of them. Right? Well, I mean, even uh, <laughs> in, in many medieval armies, spears were still a popular option. Well, and not only that, but uh, they also develop variants of them, like pikes, right? Yep. And, uh, you know, so basically pole-type weapons were actually extremely popular, you know, like I said, I think even, well, even uh, ancient China and Japan and stuff like that. I mean, I've seen uh, martial artists give demonstrations of, of spears, like yep. spear fighting. Uh, you know, and I've seen even in, in uh, you know, movies and stuff like that. I mean, if you ever watched a Jackie Chan movie, he's he knows how, he knows how to use a spear. Yep. And it looks pretty slick and like uh, really, really fast and and uh, deadly thing too, right? But alas, there's just no love given to spears in these games. Yeah. And there should have been. Okay, well, we're going to read the Adventurer's Journal... It's part of the uh, um, Live Another Life alternate start mod. And it's, okay. it's, it's basically how it's the connecting. This book is the connect, connecting element between uh, whatever you were doing before you came to Helgen and what happens after. Yeah. Right? Yep. So anyway, it's hard to believe I filled up a whole journal already. I never realized how much of Cyrodiil I hadn't seen yet. So much for diversity, but yet so much destruction from the Great War. A lot of history has been lost forever. This The expedition is ending soon and everyone will be returning home. I have one last task to perform. Before I do the same, I'll send the other journal ahead with my supplies and the artifacts we recovered. I received word from my contacts in Skyrim. All seem quiet now. Probably for the first time since High King Torig was killed. I should be able to make the crossing quietly enough during the night, so long as there are no Imperial patrols to deal with. Mm. So much for being discreet, I crossed the border near a small village called Helgen and made my way up to Darkwater Crossing. Unfortunately, I can't get back to my camp now because the area was filled with Imperial patrols. It seems they are searching for someone, someone very important. If I'm not mistaken, someone they intend to ambush here. This could be the very thing I'm seeking here in Skyrim, but crossing the border in the dead of night without passing through checkpoints has turned out to be a very bad plan. I woke early this morning with an Imperial sword pressed to my neck. A patrol found me camped under a rock outcropping on the edge of the volcanic marshes. I guess I wasn't as well hidden as I thought. I have no idea where they're taking us, but I've been stuffed into the back of a rickety old cart being pulled by an even more rickety looking old nag. At least they let me keep my journal for now. Shore's <laughs> bones, if only I had known sooner. The ambush, the captives in the cart with me. The Stormcloak rebels, led by none other than Ulfric Stormcloak himself. There's no time to explain properly. I scarcely believe it myself. If it hadn't been for the dragon, I'd not even be here to write this down. Yes, a dragon, big black, as large as the towers of the keep itself. It swooped in out of nowhere and laid waste to the village in the keep. General Tullius didn't take my head today, or the heads of several Stormcloak rebels, but that doesn't matter now. Advar and Raylof set aside their differences to help the survivors. They went into the lower keep hours ago. Something about caves with a back entrance. I don't think they're coming back. I'll have to see if I can get out of the city and down to Riverwood. Someone needs to warn them. This building won't remain standing much longer. Yep. I still can't believe it. A dragon straight out of legends. Nobody back home will ever believe me. So there we go. So anyway, how are we going for time here anyway? We are an hour 39. Oh my. Okay, well, I guess we will have to explore Elgin Keep. In the next episode then because we've already run long enough i think all right so until next time i'm wreck b5 and i am sandman 99 have a good one <laughs>